former Forbes reporter says Donald Trump lied to him about his wealth to get onto the Forbes 400 list. But this is really a story about how Trump did this. And we hear the proof in a new audio released by the Washington Post. It is the first known publicly available sound of Mr. Trump posing as his vice president of finance, John Barron. The audio is from 1984, and the journalist is named Jonathan Greenberg. He says... Barron tricked him. Take a listen and see if you can tell who it is. Most of the assets have been consolidated to Mr. Trump, you know, because you have down Fred Trump. And, and, and I'd like to talk to you off the record if I can, just to make your thing easier. If okay, sure. Is that all right? Yeah, that's fine. All right, but, but I think you can really use Donald Trump now, and, and you can uh, just consolidate. I think last year somebody showed me the article, and I think you had 200 and 200. And really, it's been pretty well consolidated now for the most part, as, as I also think somebody had mentioned that you had asked about that or somebody had, and it's been pretty well consolidated, okay? Jonathan Greenberg joins us now. Thank you very much uh, for joining us and for taking the time to dig back into the annals of uh, memories slash painful memories and to remember that you might have had tapes of these conversations. People will hear them and say, how could you not know that was Donald Trump? But this was in the 80s before all the TV, before he was such a nationally, even internationally recognized person, we weren't used to hearing him uh, the way we are today. What made you look back at this? Well, I had heard him, Chris, and, and I, because I had interviewed him before he called his John Barron the year before, and yet no one could imagine the unimaginable. No one could imagine that someone would do something like this, call as their own PR person. I heard about Trump and I looked into my files and I guess I am something of a pack rack. And I thought I'd like to see those tapes about, you know, the Forbes 400 and the rich list. And, and, and I looked and I was like, wait a minute, this is John Barron. And when I heard them, I thought these things were much better crafted lies than I thought. And that led me to further research about how much was he really worth in 82, 83, and 84. And, and it was under $5 million. I put him down for $100 million. He would, should never have been there in the first place. You got duped. What made him successful at doing this, in your opinion? You know, he is a consummate con man. He understood what I was doing, you know, going around the country, putting people on, asking them. And he figured out what he had to do in order to deceive me and get onto that list. And he did it very well. And he maintained that persona of just sort of talking about his assets without any sense of debt and lying about it. He had Roy Cohn call me to lobby for him um, about his net worth and lie for him. You know, where is my Roy Cohn? He was there back then and he was calling Forbes magazine and talking about fictitious income statements. Mm. So he knows he knows <clears throat> knew where to where we couldn't go. And he he went right there um, and and uh, deceived me. So you have this so what value of this. People have heard this. They haven't heard the tapes the way they will now um, because of what you've discovered in your 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 own uh, memory bank. But why should people care about what Donald Trump did to try to reestablish his financial prowess all the way back in the 80s? Well, you know, it, it, he really, it, it shows what, what he did to the media or as a journalist during his career, he also did to the banks. He, he basically lied and deceived in order to get his net worth up so he could borrow money, which of course led to the first bankruptcy and the collapse, three and a half billion dollars, you know, that he, that he borrowed and then collapsed. And he also did, has done as, as president. He has, you know, can see in, in, the mo in a way that just like we weren't prepared for him as the media, I, I don't think the media was prepared for him as a politician. Like we weren't prepared for him as a businessman. No one, no one is prepared for the, the, the level at which of his deception. I used to be proud, Chris, that I was the guy who kept him in check. He said he was worth 500 million. He was only worth 100 million. In fact, he moved the guideposts. He knows how to change the question. Not whether he should be on the Forbes 400, but where he should go and stopping him from his claims that he's at the very top, worth more than any other real estate tycoon in New York City. Now, Jonathan, you know, you know me and you know that ordinarily this is a situation might, where I might be hammering somebody who's in your position, but I can't. You know why? Too hypocritical. I was in the exact same position when I was at ABC News with a really good investigative team, and he was coming into full flower as Trump, the TV icon, and we did a net worth story uh -huh. about him. 
And he talked us into a situation where we were only comfortable going to air with what his net worth was if he agreed. Mm -hmm. And he wound up going up by about 50% every phone call I had with him. And so he didn't even need <laughs> to have a fake call. persona. He wasn't even, he wasn't even uh -huh. pretending to be somebody else. He's very persuasive, but people will look at this and say, okay, so he's good at it, and guys like Greenberg and Cuomo are dummies, and they go for it, but this is why he's a good businessman. You have to do what you have to do to get there. Fake it till you make it. Mm-hmm. That's funny. <laughs> you know, the, um, you know, he, 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 there's one thing about exaggerating, and, and there's another thing about sort of totally lying. He lied about that there were 25,000 apartments in Brooklyn and Queens and Staten Island. There were, there were 8,000 apartments in Brooklyn and Queens. He lied about his father, that he owned all of his That's father's assets, and he borrowed against his father's assets, mm -hmm. you know, which supposedly were his and had been consolidated. He didn't own any of them till his father died in 1999. Right. So banks loaned money. What, it's, it's hard to imagine that business could be built on this deceit and that banks could lend on the same, you know, inflated assets with no sense of debt. What we did learn, Chris, is, is the, the New Jersey Casino Control Commission in 1981, in a mm -hmm. document no one saw for 20 years, did know what he was worth that year. And, and in fact, it was like he had a million dollar trust fund and, and $400,000 in the bank. Right. And it was a complete fabrication. He deserves credit for building himself back up in an unprecedented way. But how he did it warrants scrutiny, especially now that he's the most powerful man in the world. And we are dealing with his penchant for deception right now. He won't show his taxes. Why? Lots of excuses. We know none of them to be true. Jonathan Greenberg, very important to focus on the nature of the man in power. Thank you very much for giving us this window into your own experience. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, Chris.